During the years of the Soviet Union thousands of scientific experiments were conducted, which were usually under a seal of secrecy. But often there were unwanted witnesses to this or that experience, for which there was an official version of the explanation of incomprehensible things. Thus the government tried to reassure the population, although these explanations did not always coincide with the true state of affairs. Before you watch this video, I'm going to ask you to support my channel with a thumbs up. It won't cost you anything, but it means a lot to me and my channel. Thank you. A Mysterious Earthquake Kirovsk Location on the Map of Russia September 4, 1972 The small town of Kirovsk, near the mountain massif of Kyukisvuncher, Kola Peninsula, Murmansk region, experienced underground tremors with a magnitude of 3 to 4 points. Citizens watched anxiously as dishes in their kitchens bounced and in some houses even window glass cracked. No one told the locals that a real nuclear explosion had taken place just 22 kilometers from their homes. At the time, people did not suspect the explosion, as it was set deep underground. But what caused such metamorphoses? Project Dnepr The true causes of the detonations, codenamed Dnepr-1 and Dnepr-2, were strictly classified. Officially, experiments on or crushing were conducted underground. But many modern researchers believe that the purpose of the experiments was different. Back in the 1960s, the program Peaceful Nuclear Explosions for the National Economy, Program 7, was launched in the USSR. This project was supposed to simplify the extraction of minerals, but, as one would expect, the practice brought some problems. The fact is that the detonation of the nuclear charge contaminated the mined ore. And this, in turn, was dangerous both for the miners and for the workers of the enterprises where the product was delivered. It wasn't until 68 that a new technology was developed to crush the ore. Namely, a system was invented with which to control the spread of radiation after a nuclear explosion. A schematic sketch of the safe extraction of minerals from the Earth's bowels. From the explosion chamber was laid an isolated diversion channel, which, in fact, from the layer of minerals and removed dangerous substances. It was decided to test this technology at one of the deposits in the Murmansk region. And it was the echoes of these tests in 1972 that the residents of Kirovsk, located near Mount Kuelper, felt. The researchers drilled a deep channel and placed a nuclear charge under the ore deposit. Then, using the Dnepr-1 explosion, the testers shattered a colossal layer of rock and extracted 410,000 tons of apatite ore to the surface. But very soon dangerous radioactive products began leaking out from the cracks in the rocks. As a result, a cloud was formed that slowly crept toward Kurovsk, polluting the environment along the way. But, according to specialists, after a couple of days the surrounding area became relatively clean. The cavity where the products of the explosion were drained was not uncovered until 1975. It turned out that 72% of decay products and 720,000 tons of melted or got stuck in it. Before explosion, special tunnels were built under the mountain, where molten or after detonation flowed. After that, it was taken out of the place of action by dump trucks. By the way, 22 kilometers from Kurovsk, there are still mounds of ore left over from the tested ore. On August 27, 84, the Dnepr 2 project was brought to life. This time two nuclear charges 75 meters apart were detonated. The explorers wanted to improve the crushing process by counter-movement of waves. As a result, the miners managed to extract over 2.5 million tons of apatite ore. However, about 400,000 tons received dangerous pollution. Remnants of minerals at the foot of Mount Quelpor. After the experiments, the Soviet experts concluded that the environment was virtually intact. But for a long time there were still elevated concentrations of tritium in the mountain streams, which were considered acceptable for human activity. At that time, many people preferred not to think that playing with nature could lead to irreparable consequences. The fact is that after implementation of the Dnepr project the once seismic stable Kola Peninsula started to be shaken 10 times a year, and in the Kibani mountain massif underground shocks are still going on. Fortunately, further development of the technology was considered doubtful, and in 1991 the experimental mines were shut down. 
The dangerous zones were isolated with concrete, and all the entrances to the galleries were blocked with rocks. Nowadays, some scientists are inclined to believe that the Dnieper project was not implemented for ore extraction at all. The explosion of Dnieper 1 crushed a block of apatite ore measuring 50-50-50m, which resulted in the extraction of 400,000 tons of ore. However, in the same review they add, the mined ore was taken into account, but the lack of roads makes it impossible to send it to the concentrators. Clearly, the reason in the form of lack of roads cannot be taken seriously. Can we then consider that the ore was really mined? The blocked entrance to the adit. So the academic made a reasonable assumption that the mining was just a screen, and that the underground explosions were done for some other purpose. After all, where have you seen convenient roads at other mines in the country? They are not there in the first place, and it is ridiculous to refer to the cancellation of the project for the lack of a road. Colossal funds were spent on the project, but until now the true reason for nuclear tests on the peninsula remains an unknown page in the history of the USSR. I thank you for watching. Your support is very important to me. Your comments and thumbs up motivate me to release new videos on interesting topics. Subscribe and turn on notifications. See you in the new videos.